I was looking on my favorite website trying to find something free to pick up when I saw this lawn mower for only $10. I sent the seller a message and we made arrangements to meet up to make the sale. But when we got together, he had more information about the mower that I don't recall being in the ad, which was a bit disturbing in my opinion. Now after talking for a few minutes, we finally parted ways and I had to wonder, did I just get scammed or was the seller really that unaware of all the issues they told me about? In today's video, we're going to be looking at this weed eater brand lawnmower, and the problem is that the person I bought it from says it has a few issues, and they're not sure if it's even able to start and run. But to be honest, the entire interaction I had with the seller had me a bit worried that there's more wrong with the mower. Unfortunately, this is just part of the issues I have with sellers or even resellers on the internet, and I'm going to talk about these issues while I try and figure out if this mower is even worth fixing. Now, I'm going to try and repair this mower, but yours might be a little different, so this might not work on yours. So if things are not working out for you, like in the video, please ask about it, and I'll be glad to answer your questions. Now, this mower was being sold for almost nothing. They must have felt as though they didn't want to just give it away, so instead asked for a few bucks, which I had no problems giving them. The reason is, these simple little mowers are almost bulletproof. Just make sure there's plenty of oil in it. It doesn't even have to be clean oil. And make sure the gasoline doesn't have water in it and isn't old and stale, and it should start and run. These are so easy to buy, clean up, and sell that it's a no-brainer you're going to make money on it, but only if the ad is being honest. But what if they're not being honest? Well, that's when things don't go so well. Now, when I checked the oil level, there wasn't any on the dipstick, so I had to add several ounces to get it near full, which unfortunately happens all too often when it comes to lawn mowers. Now, this one also didn't come with any fuel in the tank, so of course I couldn't test it out when we met up. Now, the first thing I want to do before we go on with the next step is to do a test start and confirm that the engine will start and run. We'll then go on with what happened with this particular mower and the interaction I had with the seller. Now, even though it says to press the bulb three times, I'd only start counting when you can feel the bulb has some resistance. When pressing it, then you'll know fuel is being sprayed into the engine. Fortunately, the engine started and ran for a few seconds on the fuel the primer sprayed into it. That little bit of running should have pulled enough fuel from the bottom of the tank to the bowl area. So I think if we try that again, it should start and stay running. At least that's what I hope. And that's why these simple little engines are so effective. With a carb sitting on the tank, any bad fuel stays away from the carb, and with some fresh fuel, most of the time, these start right up. Now there's quite a bit of smoke coming from the muffler, and if we take a closer look, you can see there's even oil coming out of the muffler and landing on the deck. That can only mean one thing, which is this mower was in a really bad position for quite a while and allowed the oil to get to the wrong side of the piston. Unfortunately, that's where our story begins, and it's actually quite shameful. So back to how I got this mower. When I met up with the person who was selling this mower, they started to tell me more about the issues it was having. There's just one problem. The ad never mentioned any issues with it. The ad only mentioned good things about the mower. Now the ad said it had a new mulching blade, a new pull cord, and even a new spark plug. Lots of good keywords here, mainly with the word new, but what you call new may not be what someone else calls it. On top of that, the extra information about what could be wrong with it was not a bonus, but something else which I can't say out loud, but I'm sure you can come up with a few words that I'm thinking about. As you can tell, I'm trying to remove the muffler because I want to look at the exhaust port for any fresh oil, and I also want to get rid of any extra oil that might be in the muffler. Now to get rid of the oil, I'm going to throw the muffler into a fire and burn it off. Besides, that's what's going to happen anyway once I get the engine started again. Now if you look in the exhaust port, you can see the exhaust valve stem, and I don't see any fresh oil in there. So I'm very certain that the oil came from the combustion side of the piston and not the valve stem area. Now when I met the seller, they were trying to tell me there was an issue with the recoil. They were basically trying to tell me that the rope was really tough to pull. Now oil seeping past the piston rings and making it to the wrong side of the piston would certainly explain this. Now the ad for this mower only had one picture of it. I know, right? The extra effort to post one more picture would have just been too much for them. But in the picture, I didn't see any fresh oil nor anything else to be honest. So I have to wonder if the picture was taken some other day, then they moved the mower to a location where the back wheels of the mower were much higher in relation to the front wheels. This would then move all the oil to a place where it's not supposed to be, which is right up against the piston. The oil would then slowly seep past the rings and make it to the other side, and if you tried to pull the rope, it would hydrolock because of the oil. 
Now this would explain all the extra information about the mower that they were not aware of when they made the post. Now I'm not defending them but it all makes sense. However, this is when the defending stops and the nasty truth comes out. So the pull rope being tough to pull was easily and logically explained, but what about all the other facts in the ad? So they mentioned that it had a new mulching blade and after getting it out to sharpen it, it was then that I realized this is not what I would call new. Now it was not the original one, but this one had been used for maybe one season. So one season after replacement, would you still call it new? I was expecting to see a brand new blade that still had the factory edge on it and fairly clean, but it was none of that. Now, would I call this blade new? No, I wouldn't. Instead, I would have said the blade was replaced recently, but how would I define the word recently? Last week, last month, or last year? Well, how about this? At least I'm not saying it's new when it clearly isn't. Now, it was in great shape, so I'm not complaining too much, even though it sounds like I am, but their definition of new is certainly up for debate. Now, I haven't gotten to the pull rope yet to show you what I found there, but I'm going to talk about it anyway, since it falls in line with questioning the details of the ad. So the ad mentioned that it had a new pull rope installed, so I was expecting to see a bright and shiny new rope, or maybe even one that's dark in color, but this one was gray in color. Now, I'm not going to tell you that I'm a pull rope expert, but this pull cord color is what was on the mower from the factory. It's a default color for this model from this time period. The only reason I know this is because I find this cord quite often on machines from the same period. So was this pull cord new? My guess would be no. So where did they come up with the idea that the rope was new then? If I had to make a guess, they were either lying about it or someone was supposed to replace the rope and they were the ones who did the lying instead, which then makes the seller a liar as well. Now those are just my guesses, but I doubt we'll ever figure out the truth. So here's the blade and it's one of those annoying universal blades with some really cool adapters. Nothing wrong with them, but they can be really cumbersome to work with. Like I said, it's not new, it's not clean, and it did need a bit of sharpening. Now, the last item they mentioned being new was the spark plug, but I never took it out to inspect it, and the reason why is because I didn't need to, and to be honest, I wasn't trying to check all the facts about the ad at the time. So if this mower was in working condition, what all did I need to do to it? The only real work I needed to do was to replace the pull rope, so what was wrong with the new pull rope they supposedly had installed? Well, it turns out the rope was about one foot too short, but is that a real issue? The answer is yes. For some dumb reason, I find that most people feel as though the harder they pull on the rope until all of the rope is out of the recoil, the better it is. And not realizing they could break the rope. It's called a lawnmower pull for a reason. Your hand should never go past your body. Now, when I see a person pulling on the rope to its full extension, I never correct them unless I just fixed it for them. I would typically tell them that I have to take the mower back and make the rope about two feet longer because of the way they're pulling on it. After getting this mower home, I started to look at it and it was very apparent what was going on with this mower. It was leaking oil. The pull rope was tough to pull, but it wasn't as bad as what the seller was making out to be. And it just needed a good cleaning and some light work so I can test it out and then sell it or possibly even donate it. Now, I've been going on and on about how shady the other seller was, but it's now my turn to be the seller. How would I make my post for this mower then? Easy. I would do the exact opposite of what the last seller did. When I'm done with this mower, I'll clean the engine, the entire mowing deck, the wheels will be cleaned and lubricated, the blade will be sharpened, the oil will be changed, and of course, if the air filter needs it, it'll be replaced. After all that work, the mower will look as new as possible, start and run when it's hot or cold, and hopefully, that should be enough to make someone realize what a great deal this mower is. That, and I don't ask anywhere near what the market says it's valued at. Now, I'm not going to say it has a new mulching blade or that it has a new spark plug, but I will be saying that it has a new pull rope because I was the one that replaced it. Now, the ads I put up aren't typically as wordy as my videos, but they will go something like this. This mower starts and runs fine, blade is sharp, and the oil was just changed. This mower is ready to be used. Or basically something like that. Now, if they have a question, I'll answer it, but I'm only going to be responding to the first person who seems to be committed to the purchase. All other tire kickers will be ignored because I simply don't want to waste my time. If you feel as though that's wrong, I understand why. Unless you're retired or without a job, everyone's time is pretty precious, so I'm not going to waste yours, so I'd like the same courtesy as well. I also forgot to mention this, but my ads typically have at least three pictures of the item I'm selling. The three will differ in perspective and also distance away from the item. All the pictures will be clear and with ample lighting. Extra pictures can be taken, but only if whatever it is you want me to take a picture of makes sense to me. If for some reason you want a picture of the underside of the mowing deck, you better have a good reason why. 
Now, a lot of people have told me I don't charge enough to cover my labor for the work I do, and they would be correct. However, I do it more for the enjoyment of this hobby while my other job pays the bills. Now, if you want to do this for a living, I've got some terrible advice for you, and you're not going to like what I have to say. You're going to need commercial property and the cheapest you can find to help keep your overhead down and you'd have to service and repair several items a week along with charging a premium for your time. By the end of the month, hopefully you have enough to pay the rent, other bills, and yourself. It's not easy and I recommend you think about it long and hard before making a decision. There's a reason why you don't see a small engine repair shop on every corner of every town. There simply isn't enough work to support that kind of service industry. That's the reason why you have hobbyists like myself to do it. Unfortunately, with the way things are going right now, this is a dying industry and eventually you won't be able to get any parts because they don't want you to repair stuff anymore. They want you to throw it away and buy the next one. But if you're like me, you'll at least try and see if you can make it last as long as possible. The last thing we need to do is to put everything back together, replace the dirty air filter, and then try starting it. Hopefully we didn't make any mistakes or get some water where it doesn't need to be, and it'll start up. Otherwise, this video is going to be a lot longer than I expected. So fortunately it started and ran just like it should and even though I only showed it running for about 15 seconds, in reality I had it running for about 3 minutes. Now the oil isn't what I would call hot but it should be warm enough to do an oil change. Now my recommendation is to change the oil as often as you please but if you don't want to change the oil every year, do it every other year instead. But if you do it that way you could forget if you did it the year before or if this is the year you get to skip. That's the reason why it's just easier to do it every year. The last thing I want to mention is that I don't have issues with all sellers. Most are very knowledgeable about what they're selling and even if they're just a reseller where they buy something incredibly cheap and then sell it for something closer to market value, they still might know a thing or two about what they're trying to sell. But the ones that are simply lying about it or have no knowledge about what they're selling and just presuming it to be fact are the ones I have issues with. Now should I have called out the person for what they sold me? In the end, I got what I wanted and even though it was kind of shady, it still worked out great for me. Now the end result was that he only made $10 off of me and I got to enjoy my hobby again and hopefully pretty soon someone will be using this to mow their grass for the next few seasons and maybe longer if they decide to take care of it, but you can never count on it. So my question is, have you ever bought something from an online ad and it wasn't exactly what the seller said it was going to be like? Now this doesn't have to be a piece of lawn equipment, it could be clothing, it could be household goods, or maybe even food. At this point, we almost never see what we want to buy until it's right in front of us, all thanks to the internet. Thank you for watching, I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or about your own projects, and I hope to see you in the next video.